Hello and welcome. My name is John Gross. I'm the bone and soft tissue pathologist at the Johns Hopkins University. Here we have case number 15, which is uh, from a child uh, complaining of wrist pain. A plain film radiograph was obtained showing a mixed lytic and blastic destructive mass in the uh, distal radius metaphysis. This mass has destroyed the cortex um, and has lifted the periosteum with a radiographic uh, Todman triangle like pattern. Um, and again, the uh, matrix pattern is both lytic and destroying the bone as well as uh, blastic and that there's uh, these radio densities um, in a regular pattern shown here. You see that this is a child because the growth plates are open. Tissue was obtained and, and you may have seen in the um, scanned image, this is a uh, clearly uh, malignant neoplasm with nuclear pleomorphism. It's um, invading the uh, host bone here uh, with um, a fibroblastic um, uh, spindle cell sarcoma morphology. Um, various areas are chondroblastic here with this um, very cellular um, uh, cartilage um, differentiation. Um, but it doesn't uh, look like uh, to, to us as a high-grade chondrosarcoma, which would be uh, extremely unusual, would not have all that matrix mineralization radiographically, certainly would not be something that would be expected um, intermedullary in a uh, young patient. And uh, this would only be a high-grade chondrosarcoma because um, chondrosarcomas are generally uh, not anywhere near the cellular or anaplastic. Um, but of course, Chondrosarcomas do not have matrix mineralization, which um, would be seen in chondroblastic osteosarcoma, which is uh, one of the patterns that we have here. And finally, uh, various areas of this tumor, again, are fibroblastic as well as osteoblastic. Um, and we knew that also radiographically seeing all the matrix mineralization, which can also be seen here. This is a conventional high-grade osteosarcoma, which on this biopsy has osteoblastic, fibroblastic, and chondroblastic features. So I'd like to briefly discuss the osteosarcoma variants with you today. We'll start with osteoblastic osteosarcoma. So on the left is a intermediate to high power view of a malignant tumor with brisk mitotic activity producing uh, osteoid matrix, which has mineralized uh, and this pink and purple material. On the right is a higher power view of these malignant cells that are anaplastic in morphology uh, or nuclear features that directly produce this wispy lace-like osteoid matrix. Uh, again, that's the definition of osteosarcoma, malignant cell that's directly producing um, osteoid that is uh, mineralized. Here's a collage showing at the top left a spindle cell sarcoma with variable nuclear pleomorphism. It's relatively bland, but, but variably uh, pleomorphic, uh, which is also associated with a more well-formed foci of osteoid. This is a fibroblastic osteosarcoma. And you notice that that uh, well-formed uh, bone is not rimmed by osteoblasts. The top right is an example of telangiectatic osteosarcoma with blood-filled cystic spaces and fibrous septae, uh, which contain, even at this low power, you can see that it's a highly cellular and um, anaplastic sarcoma. The amount of osteoid uh, matrix identified in telangiectatic osteosarcomas may be quite focal. Uh, radiographic correlation is often necessary. The bottom left is an example of chondroblastic osteosarcoma with a foci of hyaline cartilage surrounded by fibroblastic um, spindle cell sarcoma. And the bottom right is an example of giant cell rich osteosarcoma with uh, mitotically active 
tumor cells producing uh, osteoid in association with abundant large giant cells with numerous uh, osteoclast-like nuclei. Small cell osteosarcoma is seen here on the left with uh, a filigree pattern of osteoid with these primitive cells seen at low to intermediate power. And on the right, you can see that these primitive cells are directly producing this uh, mineralized matrix. And the cells, while they're quite uh, small, there's a little bit of cytologic atypia, um, although that's sometimes um, subjective. The point here is that these um, primitive cells are directly producing uh, the matrix mineral, uh, mineralized matrix, which is very wispy and lace-like um, calcification pattern. And the final variant that I'll talk about um, today is chondroblastoma-like osteosarcoma, which is another very, very rare variant. On the left, you see a pink tumor with a purple matrix mineralization pattern. And on the right, you can see it at um, intermediate power. Uh, the cells really do resemble chondroblastoma, some of which are even kidney bean shaped. There's a, uh, a nuclear groove here, but there's also mitotic activity, as you can um, see here in the, the left kind of center. And then there's a matrix mineralization pattern of this purple calcifications that you uh, need to identify for osteosarcoma. Of course, this was clinically and radiographically aggressive appearing tumor and not a discrete uh, epiphyseal foci um, that is uh, clinically and radiographically benign, which would be uh, more consistent with a chondroblastoma. But again, this is a very rare tumor and often needs uh, very careful radiographic and sometimes expert consultation. This uh, tumor was treated with neoadjuvant chemotherapy and was resected. And here is a gross photo of the uh, neoadjuvant treated osteosarcoma of the uh, distal radius metaphysis. And you see it's all almost dead um, tumor here on this um, cut section. Osteosarcoma is the most common non-hematopoietic uh, primary bone tumor with a bimodal age distribution in patients younger than 20 and in greater than 60 years of age. It generally occurs in the metaphysis of long bones, such as the knee, but can affect any bone. Radiographically, osteosarcomas uh, are generally ill-defined with mixed lytic and blastic uh, radiographic features. Many osteosarcomas will grow and create a Codman's triangle, which is when the periosteum becomes elevated and lifted by an advancing tumor front and will leave behind it uh, uh, a radiodense uh, reactive periosteal bone formation. Uh, osteosarcomas generally grow rapidly, which is in contrast to conventional chondrosarcomas, which are a much slower and indolent growing tumor. Osteosarcoma is defined by the production of malignant osteoid, which is often lace-like and it lacks osteoblastic rimming. The majority of osteosarcomas uh, require neoadjuvant or preoperative chemotherapy. There's a couple subtypes that do not, which we'll discuss in other videos. The lung is the most common site of metastatic disease. The prognosis is variable for osteosarcomas. And uh, the conventional osteosarcoma, such as what we saw in our patient in this example, uh, has a 50 to 80% survival. Lower grade osteosarcoma variants have a better prognosis with greater than 90% survival. Thank you.